Oh no. Guess I gotta get it reholdered. Let's get comfortable, pull up a chair. Let's get to some of the other stuff. We've had some great news. <laughs> a lot of people watched this, our last video on CGC. So I'm gonna have a follow up because there was a lot of uh, interaction in the comments, which was fantastic. I appreciate it so much. Uh, we've been making videos for a lot of years and not really been able to break in and be a bigger part of the community. I think we've been making videos since I opened nine years ago. We're pretty close. So go back and enjoy some of that stuff. Um, I have an interview with uh, Sean Lewis, uh, David Pepos, uh, before he was working at Marvel. Ryland Grant, Scott Snyder stopped in and uh, did a video with us here in the shop. So yeah, check that out. Appreciate you coming back and checking it out. There's gonna be a more uh, get off my lawn stuff uh, from an old man. Uh, I want to say, I want to thank everybody who uh, put in a comment, even if it wasn't uh, in a, people that didn't agree with me, they were very, very respectful. I don't know if that's because uh, that's our community, which is my hope, or that they think I'm Santa Claus and they're going to get coal in their stocking. <laughs> I don't know which that is. One of, the, one of the ones that stood out to me the most was about um, fair market value and they were like, oh, fair market value is fair market value. That's kind of just a circle, but let me explain what I mean. It, it's not about what we think is fair market value. It's about the transparency of where they are getting fair market value and then how they are putting it on the book. Is the far, fair market value uh, 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 over a year, six months, three months? Is it only heritage? Is it uh, eBay and heritage? Is it, um, are they taking just the number from Overstreet Guide um, and doing 4% on that? The transparency is not there for the fair market value, which to me is, you know, I mean, big corporations do this. They just leave it out and figure, you know, oh, people know what we mean. No, because fair market value is, can be very arbitrary. Do you do you make the far mar fair market value on the raw book when it's sent into you? Is it 4% of the raw value of this book? Or do you grade it first? Now, since you're CGC and you're the market leader and your books get more money, if you're grading it first, and then you wanna take 4% on what that graded book sells for in the market, what market are we talking about again? And I, and I hate to keep going over this, but I wanna to try to make it everybody clear on why I think they need to be more transparent about this, because it does get into the weeds about where we're getting that number from. To me, I would say you would have to put 4% on the raw book and not the graded book, because once you start doing it on the graded book, there's a lot of tendency for, you know, there's a lot of difference between a 9-0 Action Comics number one and a six Action Comics number one. It, it, like it's, it would be, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars difference at 4% on a $12 million book. Probably a company that's getting Action Comics 1 is possibly not charging for it because they would like their grade on probably the most sought after book in comics. So I could see them possibly doing that for free, but there's a lot of other books that maybe aren't reaching that $12 million, but are definitely in the hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, if not the tens of thousands of dollars, that a point one way or the other could mean a lot of money for that company. And, you know, it, it leaves room for people to be suspicious. And when you're not being transparent, it makes people, you know, think nefarious things of corporations. When corporate, when businesses are small, small business, you're, you're dealing with two or three people and two or three employees, um, you know, the, there's a lot more trust. You, you know that guy, you know, you've, at every convention, the guy who's great, like, you know that guy. Um, and, you know, he has a great reputation. I actually just watched uh, Swaggle House. Uh, it's the first time I've seen him. He had an interview with the guy who started as the grader at uh, CGC, uh, had, then went on to CBCS, and now I believe is working for Comics Link. I didn't get to finish watching that video. If you didn't know, Emmett still uh, 
has a full-time job that works through the night and uh, I also then try to run the store. So I would love to watch the whole video, but I didn't get to watch the whole video, but uh, they were talking a little bit about the whole CGC uh, incidents and about grading with him. I am gonna go back and finish and watch that video. Uh, it seemed like a great interview and the guy seemed very knowledgeable uh, and that he's been in the business of grading a long time. Odd that he moved on to CBCS. Uh, I don't know if he's one of the founders or not. Um, and then uh, also, uh, you know, for me to be uh, completely transparent, uh, EGS um, reached out to me and I had a telephone conversation with him about his grading company and what he's doing there. And I think I'm gonna have him on for an interview. I'm still not sold on grading, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm willing to let people talk about their company uh, and tell people about how they do things. They don't do a percentage on books. And you say, well, that's because they're not doing a ton of books. Yeah, um, but maybe during the interview, they'll you know, say that they're never gonna do it, who knows? I'm, I'm very disappointed in, in that whole four, that 4% 4 really just chafes me. I understand maybe charging more. I really don't, but I, I can get it as, from a business perspective, I get it. Um, you want to, if you're increasing the value of that book as a company, you feel like you deserve some of that. But you didn't go hunt that book. You know, you didn't take care of that book for all the years that it got taken care of. Yeah, some people find it, buy it, and send it in, and they've had it, you know, all of 10 minutes before they're already packaging it away to go to CGC. But some people have had it their lifetime and have taken care of it all that time. So that you deserve some of that money I, I, I'm, not a I'm not a fan of that at all. I appreciate uh, we had a lot of comments and because I had forgotten what that oily look inside is. And this one that I broke actually has it in there and it's because of the two different types of plastic and that they've, they've named them Newton rings. Um, cool name. Um, I wish somebody would actually, ex instead of just giving me the name, would actually explain to me what, what that is that happens. Plastic is a petroleum product, so it does have that oily look of like oil on water, so I digress. <laughs> if you watch a lot more of my videos, you'll get a lot of this uh, tangents. <laughs> so I'm a little bit of a squirrel. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm such a stickler on that fair, fair market value. I think you really need to be 100% transparent on that. So this guy invented this scam himself, and it's just his 350 books. Nice round number, by the way, 350. Not 349, 348. Not 351, 350 to the to the number. Round numbers kind of also make me suspicious. If you said approximately, then it's not a round number. It's like somewhere near 350. That goes back to the transparency, and transparency is what builds trust. This is not the first problem that CGC has had. Um, I think that in sports cards there and and trading cards to go along with that because i deal most a lot in magic and pokemon and cgc is becoming the leader in in some of that they're they're doing a lot more of that pokemon and cgc um, i mean pokemon and magic and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh grading psa is there bgs is there like they're all doing them but i think cgc is really pushed to get get a foothold in that market also but in the card market is PSA the leader? Probably, but but by a hair. Like BGS is right on, right behind them, and then BGS. If you get a pristine um, BGS, it's going to be above a PSA 10. The pristine is. It's like top, 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 and they've come up with a holder. Great marketing, gold on black. It's beautiful, beautiful. There's other companies like SGC, which a lot of old time collectors who use them, they're one of the first, they come out of the coin market. They were grading coins first and then they started grading sports cards probably in the mid 90s, late 90s is right when they started. I mean, I haven't done the research. If anybody's interested and wanna know, leave it in the comments and I'll, I'll bring back with the answer, but I'm pretty sure that that's in the time. But for vintage, SGC, is known to be very, very tough graders. So like if you have a five or a six 
SGC in a vintage card, you probably could pop that out, send it to BGS or send it to PC, PSA and get like a 775. And I'm sure there's guys out there who are doing this as a, either as a little bit of side business, you know, you know what two or three grades will do to any collectible. And that's another thing is, is that this grading has become more important than the books. These very rare books of, um, you know, one in 1,000 or one in 2,000 that has been done by Marvel. The, the book doesn't even have to be a key, but you get a 9-8 on it and it's a, you know, and the population is low. All of a sudden this book is worth a lot. But you know, 50, 60, 70 years from now as the market changes, and I know people don't care hey, as long as I make my money. But a lot of us aren't there to make the money, right? It, it's, it's a love of the comics. I came to comics because uh, a couple of my neighborhood, the kids in the neighborhood that I wanted to be friends with read comics. And they wouldn't even let me start out with the good comics. They made me read Sad Sack. And my family was a military family. So we, you know, I caught all the humor in it. It was great. Uh, and then I graduated to Sergeant Rock and to Swamp Thing, right? Which was two of uh, one of the guy's favorite books and they became mine also. Now, the stories in Sergeant Rock, 99% of the Sergeant Rock books are not worth anything, right? There's a, there's a handful, his first appearance, first enemy ace. There, there's some that have some value. There's a couple of gradable books in the series that you know, you, you might want to grade if you want to try to make money on them. But for the most part, they're not. But the stories are fantastic and amazing, especially if you come from a military family or if you served. Sergeant Rock's a phenomenal leader. All the guys in Easy Company uh, follow him and show bravery and courage. And there's life and death stakes in every single issue. And, um, you know, there's clear bad guys that aren't super powered. Um, and, you know, just goes on and on. I could go on for hours about the great things I learned uh, from Sergeant Rock and Easy Company. And then what I learned from Swamp Thing is, uh, you know, originally when I started reading it, it was Alex Holland. It wasn't what it morphed into under Alan Moore, which I love. And, you know, a lot of people are purists when a book changes, they go crazy. But people have to remember, some of these retcons are amazing. Like the, the Swamp Thing retcon is, is just amazing. But when I was reading the original Swamp Thing, it was even though he was, he was feared, people wouldn't be around him. He was a, like he was a freak and, uh, you know, he had human intellect, but uh, he was a freak on the outside. He still strived to be a hero and a protector, even though people made fun of him and were afraid of him and on and on. He showed that he could uh, be above that. And, and be a hero. So like, that's the kind of things that brought me to comics and keep me in comics all this time. What I ask of the companies who are facilitating this, and I, and I do really get why you have to have graded copies. If I'm shipping a book across the country and that customer can't come to my desk and we can't disagree on the grade, we need a third party to say, hey, this is what it is. I don't think there's one third party. I think there's multiple third parties that we can all agree on it is just as good. And then, uh, you know, you can, it's by your pocketbook. Now it's about the more you spend, the, the possibility of having, you know, is an 8.0 from CGC better than a 9.0 from PGX, CBCS, EGS? It, I, I don't know, you guys tell me in the comments, is it? Should I pay more for their service because they are who they are? You know, it's a $70 pressing service. And I mean, there's just tons of guys on the internet, you know, through watching all the videos, uh, Red Hood over on, um, who's on, on Tails and on, and on Wednesday Beyond and uh, Big Leg. These guys do $13, $20 pressings and they're magicians, right? So they do an amazing job. I've seen their work. That's why they, they have a thriving business because they're so good. Um, they're they're th less than a third of, of what CGC is charging. Um, am I paying for uh, a better grade or am I paying for the pressing? Which am I paying for? Because if I'm paying for the grade, look, save yourself the time. Just tell me how much a 9.8 is and I'll ship it to you. 
you know, especially on a book that it's going to make me 10x the, the value. But I don't think they're doing that. I, I don't think they're meaning to do that. The thing is, is that what happens with the corporate machine is that I don't know if the guys are pay, being paid by the book, how many books they, they grade that day or hourly rate or the we don't know the training. We don't know where their baseline is. What's your baseline? Are you using uh, Overstreet Guide as your baseline? Um, you know, who, who invented grading, really? You know, the guys at Overstreet invented the game. I mean, they just changed it from letters to numbers. That's what everybody used for all the, you you'd open up your Overstreet Guide to the beginning. Uh, they had like four pages on how to grade a book and uh, it would give you explanations of everything. Is that what their baseline is? Did they come up with a different baseline? Now that they're doing 9.9s, where does that fall in the baseline, right? Now that they're, and they've always done 9.9s, but there is just very, very few. But now that they're, the word is that they're gonna pre-screen from them, that's crazy. And one other thing, <laughs> which I meant to talk about this in the beginning about putting these books and that this is the best way to keep them forever and ever and so on and so on. There's a 9th century book at the Trinity College in Ireland called the Book of Kells, K-E-L-L-S. You can look it up. They have it on display. It is not frozen in time. It is in a case, so people can't touch it with their oily fingers, but it is on display. You can see every page. They turn the pages. I forget if it's daily. I think there's like 360 pages, almost a year's worth. It is illuminated, so there's art in there also. It's not just words, there's a lot of art. Just like a comic about the Bible, that is out on display uh, every page. To put away these comics forever, and I believe the Library of Comics, ha comics? I wish there was a Library of Comics. No, the Library of Congress also has a large comic book collection. Uh, a large, large part of it was uh, donated by uh, the Jeppy family, uh, as, you, as people know as Diamond. He doesn't advertise that, but I like to advertise it for him because he is a guy that has loved comics his whole life and has really given a lot to it. Has he profited from it? Yes. But isn't everybody now? Now we all want to profit from comics. Kind of not, it's kind of hard for all of us to profit from it. This is kind of what made, crashed sports cards in the 90s, comics in the 90s. Everybody was a dealer. Um, you know, if, if you want to be a dealer, hang a sign outside a store, pay the rent. Um, you could watch my series on Tales from the Flip Side on how to open a comic shop. Otherwise, buy what you enjoy, keep reading comics. Thanks for watching.